the world's not going to change unless we change. And at least we can change our world. And by changing our world to something more harmonious, we're adding that harmony back into the world. Hi everybody, since the world's been a bit crazy for the last year or so and uh, people are having racing minds and anxiety attacks and all sorts of other unpleasant experiences, I thought I would share a tip for creating space in your mind or getting to what Zen masters often call no mind. Now, a lot of people think, no mind, why would I want to have no mind? I'd be useless. But the truth is, is that when you get rid of the ego mind, you have access to the wisdom of your subconscious, which is the intelligence that keeps your whole body alive and healthy. And then beyond that, you have access to the wisdom of the collective unconscious, which is all the intelligent beings in the entire sphere of the planet. And then if you can get beyond that, you have access to cosmic consciousness, which is, well, it's that which create universes. So look up into the scar stars at night and you'll see how powerful that mind is. And here you are, you're part of it. Now, it's pretty normal for a mind to not want to hold still because a mind's function is to mind. And so, you know, we often misunderstand that when we're meditating, we're supposed to stop our mind. But if you try to stop your mind, now you're engaged in an action, which is really just uh, using mind to try to stop mind, which produces more mind. And uh, that doesn't really help. But a simple technique that I've learned from, you know, years of study and practicing of a myriad of different techniques is to use a Tibetan bowl or a chime or anything that'll make some noise that runs on for a little bit. And then what you do is you just follow it. You just bring yourself into awareness of the sound and listen to it and feel what it's doing inside of you and be fully present with it. But then as the sound dissipates, just let your mind fall with the sound. Let the activity follow the sound. And then when the sound goes quiet, then just spend some time relaxing, knowing that the sound will come again, because I will give you the sound. And then you come back up and you follow it and you let go as the sound dissipates. That way you don't have to try to be in this state of emptiness or no mind for too long. Because for most people, if they're in there more than, you know, half a minute or so or a minute, their monkey mind just starts generating junk in their head. Oh, you got to do this. Don't worry. You don't remember. You got to remember to do this. Got to do that. Got to see. He said, she said, you know, and that's what I call mental masturbation. It just takes you nowhere and just fills your head full of junk. So we can start by just taking a few deep belly breaths. Remember, two thirds of the breath should come from the belly. Only the last third should come from your chest. So we put one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Take a few deep breaths through the nose. And when you let it out, just let it go with an ah. Just see yourself breathing your stress out. Big breath. Two thirds through the belly. Last third through the chest. Uh, and I just visualize the stress leaving my body. I give it to Mother Earth and thank her for converting it into positive energy that she can use to grow plants and 
and do something positive in nature. Let's do two more, big belly breath. One more. Oh, just let your body be heavy if you're sitting or if you're laying down. Just let your body as you, oh, Kind of like when you lay on your bed at night after a long day and you just let gravity have you. It's like, oh yeah, baby. Okay, so now I'm gonna strike the bowl. It's best if you have your eyes closed because it'll take all the external stimuli and cut it way down. Your eyes fill the brain with activity. So we'll listen to the sound and make that our focus. Then when the silence comes, just enjoy that, kind of like when you lay on your bed at night or when you're tired and you lay down and you just be with it. If you were doing this on your own, as soon as your mind starts going again, you'd strike the bowl. So you keep training your mind to stay with the sound, enjoy the silence. Stay with the sound, enjoy the silence. One thing that can help you enjoy the silence is, hey, guess what? When you're in that state of silence, nobody's texting you or talking to you or asking you to do things or judging or criticizing and there's nothing to worry about in the world you just practice getting to what's behind it all and then after a while you get to see what's behind the mystery of the conscious program mind and it's pretty magical okay so let's start with a big breath and follow the sound
So as you get more relaxed, you just wait longer, be with the sound. You might hear a funny sound in the background, that's the bullfrogs, they make a very unique sound. They're very loud at night, they keep me rocking all night long. It took me a while to get used to it. First I thought I moved in next to a furniture factory and they were planing furniture all night. I'm like, what in the world is that? But that's the beauty of the bullfrog. We get lots of them. They're big too. But anyhow, you know, if you just use something like this to entrain the mind, so you give your mind something to lock on to, but you see, I'm using a Tibetan bowl. You can choose a bowl that's tuned to a chakra that maybe you need more heart opening. So you choose a tuning fork or a bowl that's tuned to the heart chakra, or maybe you need a stronger sense of safety and security in your life. So you choose something tuned to the root chakra. I have bowls and drums uh, and tuning forks that basically I can select for any part of the body that I want. But really, if you just choose the instrument or the tool that calls to you, then um, you always have a friend that you can meditate with and, and, it, and you grow the relationship and you really develop a bond with your tools and they start being infused with your consciousness. And since your intention is to go into deep meditation, the more you work with those tools, the more they hold that intention and support you. And as I was saying, you strike it, but then you wait, follow it, paying full attention to how you're feeling and the sound and what's happening. But then as it goes quiet, you just be with all that is around you. Hear the waterfall and the pump, hear the, or the pump circulating the water in the pond, hear the bullfrogs, occasional car going by, birds, Whatever it is, just let yourself merge into it and be part of it. And uh, after a while, you begin to teach your mind that it doesn't have to fill every moment with something. And then you start having a spaciousness in your mind and you don't be, you, you stop being so overly reactive to things because you really come to realize that without processing space you can't make intelligent decisions and you can't stop reacting in relationships so these are these simple tools have been around for thousands of years why because they work and humans have always faced the trials and tribulations of rich people trying to control them and wars and famines and uh, you know violence and illness and loss of this or loss of that or the pressure of constantly trying to have more, more, more. So it's, we reach a certain point in our life where we realize the world's not going to change unless we change. And at least we can change our world. And by changing our world to something more harmonious, we're adding that harmony back into the world. So I hope you enjoy my little meditation for creating space in your mind. It's as simple as that. Look forward to sharing more with you soon. Lots of love.